Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 32, Stand and See, and I am your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai. How's it going? Yeah, it's coffee time. Coffee and knitting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't had a latte from Duncan in... Seven plus six. What is that? Thirteen days. So it's been a while since I've had one. So you're uh, gonna get the benefit of a little amped up Stephanie. Let's jump straight into the knitting. So first up, oh my, I have like this fortress of whips and FOs to show you. So let's start with the FO. Um, I, you probably forgot I was even working on this, and I only had a little bit of the edging to go. So this is my Sand and Sea Chalet by Alana DeCoste, and that is from Coastal Knits. I'm knitting, or I knit it with Malabrigo Sock in the colors 870 and 855, and I really like it. I finished it last night, and, um blocked it immediately. Oh, I just wants to show off a little bit. Um, I did not use the recommended yarn, but I did use recommended colors, and I really like the way the green and the blue play together. The blue is like cadmium, cad cadmine, something. And it's a highly variegated, well, it's like a semi-solid with pops, and then it was over-dyed with the blue. So it's mainly blue, but then if you look really close, you can see these other colors, and one of them happens to be this green. So I think it goes together very nicely. Um, I don't know if you could see him, but that's our our special Langus. Yeah. Yeah. Someone got me talking over on the boards and explaining the names of all the cats. Silly, silly, silly. And it's funny the things, because thinking back to it, it's like we got him in 2004. I was a completely different person in 2004 and the reasons I had for naming our babies what they are is funny. So I wonder if I'll feel that way about Roland as he gets older. I don't know. But <laughs> so this is done. Um, let's do an update on my 12 in 2012. This makes my eighth, which seems wrong because it's September, but eighth finished shawl. I was shooting for 12, so we're at eight. Um, I have completed five pairs of socks for other people and one top for Roland. So I was shooting for 12 of each of those before the end of the year. We talked about, I talked about my Christmas knitting. There's no way I am gonna finish four more shawls, seven more pairs of socks for people that aren't me, and 11 more tops for Roland. In fact, I decided that the best of the worsted that I had been working on, I want a foot rest. <laughs> sorry, might as well be comfortable, right? Best of the worsted that I had been working on, which was basically, sorry, a scrap, a sweater for him. Yeah. He has a few knitted tops, and I only put the classy looking ones on him, and by classy, I would say those are the um, machine dyed, solid, cabled sweaters or vests that look like something that was store-bought and I have a cute outfit to go with it. Scraps, it just looks less, it doesn't look as put together as I like him to look. I'll, I'll say it like that. Like He's my little fashion plate and I dress him either really cute or really absurd and I can't find a place for the striped cardigan or scrap cardigan or um, I, that was Steve, he just coughed up. I have a highly variegated vest that I made him that I can't find the right outfit for him to wear with it. And so he never wears it except around the house, which, what am I knitting for then? You know, it might as well be a store-bought sweater because it doesn't make me happy to only see my hand knits worn around the house. So, um, that being said, I think I'm only going to knit sweaters, vests for him that are, have those qualities, the highly cabled, machine dyed, or almost solid yarn, um, and then with the cable, did I say that? Yeah, so fine gauge, that type of thing. So um, I had purchased some um, fiber nymph in a teal and black striped colorway sport weight, I don't remember what the base is, that I've 
got two skeins at SSK to make him a sweater. I'm not sure I'm going to do that now. You know, I mean, I knit him that Mardi Gras sweater, which was Fiber Knit Sunday's Coming, I think is the name of the colorway, which is a yellow, purple, green stripe. All kinds of variegation in where the stripes fall. I knit him that, and he's still too small to wear it, but I already know it's going to be a challenge for me to put him in it. But he also doesn't wear jeans. I know. What kind of mother am I? Well, sweatpants are very comfortable, athletic pants, and he crawls and he's everywhere, and I just. The jeans are heavy and they're full of pockets, like cargo pockets, and I don't want to bog him down. I don't know. Maybe it's my own. I'm sure it is my own. I don't like that coming through. So, and now I have chatted and chatted and chatted. I can only be the coffee. Uh, <laughs> also finished is this stack of washcloth wonderfulness. So you can see I have four in this pink, purple, green, yellow. We have two that are the browns. One is massive <laughs> compared to the other. I'm a little crazy there. And then um, three of the red, purple, green, white, and then one of the brown. So together that makes 10. That's what I consider a project when I do grandma's favorite dishcloths. I knit 10 of them and call that a, a project. So. Uh, these are going to be gifts. Steve and I and Roland went to get, <laughs> went to Jenna's Farms. I talked about them last time. We picked out um, four or five soaps that we liked. Our favorite that we got for at home was, um, is the Fisherman's Companion. It's sort of a medicinal smells, how Steve described it. I would say it is, um, it smells like eucalyptus and lavender or lilac mixed together, but it's very good. We, I like that one. So that's up in our bathroom right now. And then these others are going to get packaged together. And I had thought, I need to weave in ends. I had thought to do something like that with a soap and a pretty bow. So I'll do like a salt purple to go with these two. And so there'll be more dishcloths in my future. <laughs> but those are done for now. So woohoo! Off the needles. Need to weave in the ends. I was doing that this morning. And then we went to Trader Joe's because the Trader Joe's just opened down the street from us. And if you've never been to a Trader Joe's, it is an amazing, fun grocery store to go to. And I am, have been accused often of being like a treat buyer. <laughs> I didn't know I needed that. I need it right now. I've never had that. I've never heard of it. I have to have it. So I tend to buy a lot of things at the grocery store. So those are some Christmas knitting. This I will probably... Um, I don't know. I've, I have a lot of the yarn left. This used 250 yards. Oh, and if you were curious, for the year I've knit 6,563 yards. Definitely purchased way more than that, but um, that's what I've knit this year. And so I'm going to knit, I think, uh, some sort of color work Stephen West shell, probably the Daybreak with these two colors. I also have the Archangel, which is the red. It goes perfectly too. It's one of the colors in there, in the blue. Um, so I think I'm gonna knit one of his and then look at both of them and pick which one I want and give away the one I don't want. So, <laughs> but that yarn is delicious to work with. Oh, and I didn't tell you this is um, sugars and cream, peaches and cream, peaches and cream. And I knit dishcloths on US Vibes, but I am a loose knitter. Also on the needles, more towards the Christmas end, that's where I was going, I um, cast on using the pattern of, of the One Skein Wonders book, the 101 Sock Yarn Patterns. So I cast on for, let me get the title right, Beaded Fingerless Mitts by Margie Lafrenier, Lafrenier? Definitely a French name. Um, and I used my Into the World August Club colorway. I can't pronounce it. There's a the pattern. I did not do the beads. I'm not a beaded person. But I really liked it. Um, thought it was a great little knit. The, this yarn, the Into the World that this is, is a 7525 Super Wash Merino Nylon. So it would have been a great sock yarn. Yeah? <laughs> 
it's not I mean it's not scratchy or anything by any means but it's not as soft and luxurious as I would like a uh, fingerless mint gift to be so this is for uh, one of Roland's daycare ladies she I, Steve does drop off and pick up I don't because I would be a rock on the floor trying to do that so he does it <clears throat> and I asked him okay so what colors does Tracy wear Tracy wears teal or he said Tracy wears blue and gray Okay, good. What color does Andrew wear? Red and orange. Okay, so I have to do a set that have red and orange in them. But, but when I finished this, I was like, it's not as soft as I'd like. And I showed it to Steve. I like the striping effect that it has, except there's a bit of pooling here and on the hand. And at first I was like, oh no, that will never do. I cannot give this as a gift to someone. But now that it's finished and the Pico's all, because it has a Pico edge everywhere, the Pico's all sewn down. It doesn't bother me that it pulled so much. I don't think it distracts from how pretty they are, but I don't think they're as soft and as luscious as I'd like them to be to give her a gift. So I cast on another because <laughs> he looked at this. That was the other thing. He looked at them and said, well, I said blue, not teal. So, okay, fine. She likes blue. So then I cast on another pair. These are not finished. Um, and plus, I'm so all over the place. I hope you're keeping up. I um, enjoyed knitting this one, but when I got to the end, um, I was like, oh, I don't really want to do another one right now. Not that I'll get second sock syndrome with these, but I thought it would be fun to cast on a second different pattern just to keep it interesting for me. So this is the same base design, right, following Margie's pattern but I did um, instead of her two stitch cable this interesting cable detail that she does instead of that I did a traditional four stitch cable with a ribbon between so just a different one I have not sewn down my pico here so it is rolling up I need to do that and I didn't put on the thumb but this one is Claudia hand paints which is a hundred percent merino and the yarn has a super twist. I'm not a spinner. I don't know what that means, but I absolutely love that yarn. That It's sort of like the socks that rock. Like it, It's definitely a different yarn, but has that thickness to it, if you know what I mean. I don't know. Maybe it's the same base yarn. Who knows? But um, it's very squishy. It's very, very warm. It's probably a heavy fingering weight, and that's part of the reason why they feel so dense. So both of these were knit with uh, US one and a half for the inner part of the pico and then 2.5 for the rest of the of the fingerless mitt for this one i decided instead of doing thinking reverse stockinette stitch for the palm i did regular stockinette stitch but somehow ended up doing reverse stockinette stitch on both sides of the thumb so but there's a single cable running down the, the side so those are coming along, and I like this one so much that I immediately cast on for the second one. So that's also on my needles right now. And my in-laws are coming today, which means they're coming around 1. It's 11.30 now. It is September 16th, I believe. Um, it's a Sunday. So they're coming, and we're going to watch football and hang out there. Actually, they live in D.C., so we don't have to see them that often. This is my husband's brother and his wife and she loves babies so she'll play with Roland and help it <laughs> no I mean I'm not trying to palm him off <laughs> so those are all my needles um yeah and that's my Christmas knitting maybe I should have it like a segment Christmas update dun, dun, dun. I'm sorry I'm a little hyper <laughs> all right next thing about Christmas there's so much Christmas knitting on my needles. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. And it's funny because it almost feels like I'm rushing it along. Hello, people. It's September. I love the fall. It's my favorite season right now. The leaves are just starting to turn orange, reddish orange. It's, the nights are 60 degrees. It's perfect for sleeping. Oh! Okay. So, not that I've done anything on this, but you remember the Louisa Harding yarn that I had that I was like, what do I do with this? Help me. So this is Kimono Angora Pure and, oh, I 
hope that was just a random cough. He's napping right now, and I don't want to go cap. So, um, so anyways, remember this yarn, and we picked the Lush Sampler Cow. And I had been working on it. This is going to be great, a uh, great Christmas gift. So it's definitely, haven't touched it. It's about three inches long right now. I took out the project bag to say, all right, I'm going to finish this. So I think it probably goes to six or eight inches in height total. So I took it out so that, just to show you where I am, so that next week when I show it to you, you will know that I have been working on it. Oh, me too. It made me work on it. And that is knit on U.S. size 8. Also, Christmas knitting, the Tartine by Kristen Griffin Grimes, which um, is the author of French Girl Knits, so the pattern from in there. Last week I showed you, I think, just the cast on a little bit that I had there. I'm hoping Daddy goes to get him. <laughs> Um, I have been working on that. I have it in about a week. I worked on it last weekend pretty religiously. So I have this much done. And that is Claudia Hand Paint striped with Tosh Merino Light in the Thicket colorway. And I don't know what the Claudia is. I have to write that down in my notes. But there's this cute little Pico edge going on. Yeah, I gotta go. Chris is soft. So, I showed you the tartine. Um, also, in my Aaron Lane bag of goodness, I have the Roland socks, which again, I haven't really touched. I got absorbed in those fingerless mitts, to be honest. So, here's the first one. And then I started, and thank you everyone for the advice on puff paint. Or what did Skid stop? Stop? Sock stop? I have it. I know what to go look for on Amazon when the time it's right. Um, yeah, so here's my second one. And thank you for all the advice. I've started, I think I'm past the heel. Yeah, looks like I'm about to go. Oh no. It's my last row of the heel. And I stopped mid row for some reason. So the second one is going to be a lot more light blue than navy blue. <sighs> so, um, there's that. And then you're like, what? Is that not enough projects on the needles? My God, woman, multi, multi projects. Also, the Undulating Rib Socks by Ann Bud. These are for the um, Knittables Knit Along for September Self Striping Sock Yarn. For Self Striping Yarn. If you're not in it, you need to be. Um, this is for Steph of Busy Minds Design, so this will count towards one of my pairs, not for me. And this is the first one. I am going to do one more section. Yeah, one more section of the rib pattern, which is about an inch. Each one's about an inch. And then uh, one more repeat. And then once that's finished, I will do a one-by-one one rib and bind them up. So, that's the first one, almost done. Here's the skein. It's Barocco Sock in color 1452. And I'm using US ones. US ones. So, that's the last thing on my needles. <laughs> and that, I think, is about all I've got for you this week. Next time, we will look forward to more Christmas talking. I will look forward to talking about Christmas some more. And when we get over 715 members, I'll do a prize drawing. So, okay, friends to join the group. And that's it. Stop on by. Say hi. I'm glad you took the time to watch. I really appreciate you coming back week after week. And if you're new, I talked a little fast, but this is pretty much what it's like. So, thanks for joining me. Have a great 10 or so days until I see you again. Take care. Bye. Come see me. Go show you. Do. <laughs> yeah. Do.